Hello, and welcome to today's session. As always, I'm your host, Kevin Grote, Technical Partner Manager here at VMware. And today, we're going to be talking more about micro-segmentation. You may have seen the other video regarding micro-segmentation in the server infrastructure. Today, we're going to be talking about an often overlooked use case for micro-segmentation, and that's the virtual desktop infrastructure. Virtual desktops are fantastic tools. They've gained a lot of popularity in recent years, and they're revered for the fact that the user's information, the user's experience is no longer local to the user, but that all of that data, all of that experience, and all of that content resides inside of the data center at all times. The downshot to this is that anything that the user does, whether it's an erroneously downloaded you know, virus, uh, maybe it's you know, some other sort of uh, you know, uh, attack, that's impacting their localized machine, that's also going to reside immediately inside of the data center. So it opens up a new level of concerns as to how we protect not only the premise of the data center and the server infrastructure that's in there, both north, south, and east, west, as we discussed before, but also the virtual desktop infrastructure that resides inside of that data center and how we segment those resources from their server counterparts. These ideas, if we were to do it with traditional networking and security practices, wouldn't scale very well. However, through the integration of NSX and software-defined networking from VMware, we're able to make these integrations seamlessly and in a scalable manner. So without any further ado, let's take a look at a little more technical information in NSX, micro-segmentation, and the virtual desktop infrastructure from VMware. So if we take a look at VMware NSX and Horizon View, let's start by understanding where NSX integrates and where we are with the state of virtual desktop infrastructure right now. With virtual desktop infrastructure, really our core concern inside of the traditional model has been data at rest. So that data that's sitting out on multiple locations that we haven't been able to monitor. And we always were focusing on just a north-south threat pattern, things coming into or out of the data center. Organizations have been implementing desktop virtualization to try to focus on securing that data at rest. So now all of this data that was sitting out here inside of all these different spaces is being brought down into the data center and users are getting clearer access to it. This also allowed us to exert more control over those threats coming in and out because after all, users aren't accessing resources at the application layer, they're accessing the desktop itself. So we're securing what's out there and we're also securing well, what's in there at the same time. Because of this, virtual desktop infrastructure ticked off a lot of boxes for us. It meant that we didn't have to worry about loss of data sitting on devices, and especially with things like uh, mobile devices, tablets, phones, this just began to grow. It also meant that we could control access and protect against unauthorized access to applications that might be sensitive and living on the devices also meant that we could be far more uh, proficient and efficient when we looked at you know, centralizing backups and patching against vulnerabilities, and we could do all of this inside of the data center. But VDI doesn't really answer everything, as we're realizing now. We can't just focus on that external perimeter firewall to protect us because we still have threats of you know uh, compromised you know websites malware viruses that might be caused by user behavior and being able to protect users from other users or being able to protect you know, perhaps our tier one applications from what users might do and even if our users are secure 
maybe against a dormant attack that's lying on their desktop from a compromised website, piece of malware, whatever it is. We definitely don't want that getting into our Oracle Exchange or SAP workloads. And we also don't want to be able to give access into our secure storage platforms just because we're only focused on that perimeter firewall. So things like desktop to desktop or desktop to server hacking and zero day threats or dormant threats that are living inside of users' desktops now become a great threat inside of our environment. Without NSX, it's very easy. We can create you know, virtual desktops and, and we can spin things up and provide them to people but the networking component becomes very, very complicated because that means that as machines are getting spun up, that the networking teams are having to manage multiple VLANs and access control lists and firewalls, and these are being compounded as the virtual machinery is growing. So as people are requesting more machines, more machines are being provisioned, more networks have to be provisioned to create it. And this is really labor intensive because now as it grows, it's going to be growing box by box and the networking teams are going to have to configure every single physical you know, top of rack and all of the porting and all of the firewalls and all of the VLANs and ACLs. And in order to not have a ton of errors, it means that we have to slow down, focus on manual provisioning, and maybe even fragment out management so we have multiple people doing it to make sure that it's done right. But even if it's done right, we're still vulnerable because we're not protected against user behaviors. We don't have any visibility into threats that are happening inside of the desktop. So even if everything happens exactly the way it should and we're able to provide some sort of human scale to it, we're still not getting the access and security that we need. But with NSX, we're able to do the same thing with the networks that we're able to do with the VDI implementations themselves. To be able to clone, snapshot, replicate, and secure the networks the same way we were securing and providing great scale with the virtual desktops. And then to provide great layers of extensibility within this so that we can provide protection in depth right into the VM and the application. There are a ton of high-level benefits for leveraging NSX with Horizon. Again, simplification of your VDI networking is clearly one of them. Being able to dynamically provision and to dynamically apply policies based upon the operating system, the user, or maybe the role or the machine name, and to be able to provide greater extensibility going beyond just the endpoint into the desktop, protecting things like the operating system, the email, the browser, through from malware, the zero day threats, from uh, you know anything that's happening inside of the machine itself. Now let's take a look at some of the technical benefits of leveraging NSX with Horizon. You know we could secure East West within VDI if we wanted to try to do it in a physical realm. We could have you know a zone for you know PCI compliance, a zone for databases, you know a zone for finance, and we could apply different physical firewalls inside of each of these. But the problem is this would be really hard to implement, and it would require a lot of physical infrastructure, and it also means it's going to be very complex to manage because we're likely going to have you know multiple interfaces for each one of these firewalls in order to manage them. And we're going to have to go from one firewall to another to another as we're talking about manage and making sure the configurations are replicated across all these spaces. So not only is it going to be you know, com complicated, but we're also really increasing probability for error. But if we look at leveraging NSX within this space, it changes the perspective completely. We're now able to still leverage the data center perimeter and we're able to create isolation and segmentation, whether it's at an entire pool of VMs, maybe a zero trust model down to the individual VM, 
And we can also provide ubiquitous control by leveraging the management plane and applying policies to VMs as they're created. So that as VMs are being created inside of these pools, we're ensuring that security exists for all of the units, whether it be a pool or a specific VM. So that should one virtual machine be compromised, we're not going to have to deal with issues within the rest of our infrastructure. And we're also not going to have to deal with the threats that might be present inside of a server to, uh, or a client to server hack or a client to client hack. In the last session, we talked about kind of the steps which NSX allows us to grow. Moving from a place where we simply have isolation, being able to have the exact same layer two network replicated multiple times, and be able to ensure that we have no crosstalk between networks. And this alone is huge for a lot of uh, infrastructures. But then to be able to grow and control a communication path between the network so that we have distributed firewalls and distributed routing so that as machines are communicating, they're communicating effectively in the way that we intend them to and that they're communicating only through the policies that we allow them to communicate. And then growing into advanced service utilization through things like Palo Alto or uh, McAfee or Rapid so that we're able to leverage insight right down into and beyond the virtual machine, the operating system itself. This is what we're able to do inside of the server space. And inside of the virtual desktop in, in, in integration space, we're able to see just what micro segmentation can bring us. It gives us the ability to not just focus on securing a perimeter or, and an interior network, but we can create security based upon individual network segments and we can also create security based upon different groups, ensuring that finance and IT only communicate with sales and vice versa in the ways that we deem appropriate. To also ensure that individual virtual machines inside of this space are all protected from one another and that virtual machines residing inside a specific network are protected against one another. And to do all of this outside of the perspective of a potential attacker. So if a potential attacker is looking at a virtual machine, they're really only going to have perspective into just what lives inside of the operating system. And they may be able to compromise that and do all sorts of horrible things. But if the firewall resides outside of the NIC, as it does with NSX, they're not going to have perspective into that and they're going to be stopped before anything bad can happen inside of the environment. And again, with security policies, we can even monitor for a risk or a breach and ensure that that machine is quarantined. And again, doing all of this and still integrating with the services we need like Active Directory, DHCP, NTP, name resolution and certification authorities so that the machines are being accessed the way they need to. So all of this looks like it would add complexity, but the truth is it simplifies things because of the hypervisor integration with NSX. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is if we looked at like same host trafficking between firewalls. In a conventional world, right, we would have to move from a virtual machine out into the server, out into the fabric, into the top of rack, and then move all the way back again. So we'd be looking at about six hops. With NSX, however, if it's on the same host, we're only looking at, well, zero hops. The reason is because the virtual tunnel endpoint lives inside of that host, and that's where the firewall is going to exist. So that the machine is going to be able to access that firewall, the firewall will protect the traffic, and it's all going to happen without ever having to touch the fabric in the top of rack that lives inside of that space. So it's gonna be a lot faster. But what if we aren't 
on the same host, what if we're moving from one host to another? Well, inside of a conventional environment, you're still going to be looking at about six hops by the time it moves out and back. But with NSX, you're really only looking at two hops because you're moving from one host and that host's VTEP into another host and its VTEP. And since the control plane allows the distributed firewall to be replicated across all of the hosts inside of the environment, then we're able to reduce the complexity and still provide greater speed while providing more security and ensuring that we have simplified networking, greater protection inside of the networking space, and we're able to do things like service chain uh, antiviruses, uh, provide greater partner extensibility, and also automate the application of network and security policies to specific desktops, specific desktop users, and or pools of desktops as we grow. So how do we put together NSX and Horizon View? If we were to start at looking at a high-level architecture of Horizon View, we have our connection servers, our security servers, as well as you know, View Composer and maybe our RDS hosts. But really, we're just going to focus on the desktop portion, so the security connection and the Composer servers. The idea is that we start simple, and we start by leveraging logical switching, logical routing, and also any physical to virtual connections that we may need, where we're able to protect, protect virtual machines from each other, we're able to protect individual pools, we're able to protect the way individual pools might be co communicating with physical resources, and we're able to route between resources, whether it's on the server or on the virtual desktop plane. The core idea behind firewalling with NSX and Horizon View is about taking what we already know and what we are already capable of doing in protecting individual resources or groups of resources inside of our infrastructure components and applying the same logic to our desktop components so that we can ensure that if we have a compromise inside of the space that it's not going to branch out beyond its own confines and that we can apply quarantine and ensure that we have security right out of the gate. So if we looked at a basic deployment, we have here a couple pools. We have Composer and we have our vCenter and we have our connection servers in place here. So connection server one and two and we have our security servers one and two. So the admin would go into the NSX manager would create a distributed firewall. That distributed firewall gets applied and it gets associated with Composer. Composer is then going to make this through vCenter accessible to all of the connection brokers. And if we realize that a security server is really nothing more than a connection broker that's operating as a security server role. So it's pretty simple to deploy. Then all of the clients, whether they're on WAN or LAN, are going to get access to those same resources, those firewalls, load balancers, VPN, physical to virtual and routing are all going to be accessible inside of that space. And all of the desktops that they're accessing are going to have those distributed firewalls attached to them. Again, ensuring that if there is a breach somewhere within the environment, that it's going to be protected and stopped right at that firewall so that everything else stays up and running as expected. So some quick steps to walk through deploying a distributed firewall inside of the infrastructure. Obviously you have the NSX Manager Appliance and that's going to be the first thing you do when you deploy NSX anyway and it's really just a VM. You're then going to create services which I'll show you an example of here in a second, group them together so that you can create a security tag and a group for those services. And then just build a firewall rule to trigger based upon those services and then go out and test your rules. So this gives you an example of what you might be looking at in a sample configuration for NSX 
firewall rules and VDI, where we have up at the top, we have our infrastructure rules, and then we have our desktop and application rules beneath it. Again, creating security groups and tags, and then applying those rules to them. You're also able to leverage load balancing. As we mentioned before, where we have our connection servers and our security servers, we're able to leverage NSX to provide load balancing for people inside a LAN or inside a wide area network so that we're not having to necessarily leverage uh, you know, complex load balancing solutions internally and externally and still be able to integrate with all of those solutions that we might have in place. So now, whether you're talking about a small to medium-sized deployment or a sophisticated and significantly large deployment for NSX and VDI, there are solutions to fit and allow you to create something that adheres to best practices, is highly scalable, highly secured, and highly flexible, all while leveraging your existing investments and providing greater elasticity and integration with the rest of the ecosystem that you have in place. Leveraging NSX with Horizon really does bring us to a place where we're talking about simplification of VDI networking, greater points of extensibility, security, and the ability to provision policies dynamically as the virtual desktop infrastructure grows. So we're really building upon the ideas of an on-demand, highly secured, and highly scalable infrastructure. I want to thank you for taking time to join me today. As always, I hope you found value in these sessions. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and also to follow me on social media for more updates and information regarding events, streaming roundtables, and more video content that continues to come out regarding these fantastic products. For more information, be sure to check with your local VMware engineering teams. And as always, have a fantastic day. I look forward to talking to you again soon.